Maya go be jana bala ba Jaya giri bara dare Jaya giri bara dare Jaya Gopi Jana Bala Ba Jaya Giri Bara Dare Jaya Giri Bara Dare Jaya ya so dana dana Jaya braja jana ranjana Jaya braja jana ranjana Jaya ya so dana dana Jaya braja jana ranjana Jaya braja jana ranjana Jaya ya munna chira banachare Jaya kunja biyare Jaya ya munna Jaya ya munna chira banachare
ሰማቸው <laughs> Some of it about the window key, and I go to man and day. Ah, glory to the summer devotees. Ah, glory to the summer devotees. Ah, glory to the summer devotees. Ah, glory to the lotus feet of Shishi Guru. Go on. Narayana Namaskritya Narayanaro Taman. Devam Sarasati Vyasan Tato Jaya Muldi Raja Nasta Prayusa Badresu Nitam Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloki Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki Vedi Ramani Chaiba Purani Bharati Tata Hado Adyan Chamadi Chari Samata Giyate Mokam Karati Bajalam Pangu Langari Chakri Yakripata Hampande Sri Guru Dinatarine Paramananda Mahalo Dhamma Pujita Kadavata Paramo Nima Shamsatam Vedan Vastavam Matra Vastu Shivadan Tapatayo Malana Shima Bhagavati Mahamani Kritain Kibai Pura Ishwara Shadurudi Havaru Dead Track and Vitaki Shalom. Om Namo Bhagavati Basudi Baya Om Namo Bhagavati Basudi Baya Om Namo Bhagavati Basudi Baya So we are continuing the reading, the studying of Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 23. This is the topic of the, the Jagni Brahmanas, the Brahmanas wife, uh, the Brahmanas wives blessed. They are great devotees of Lord Krishna. Their, their husbands who are the brahmanas, they were not. So it's very, very interesting discussion how Krishna favor his dear devotees and those who have no devotion, they were, uh, they were put to shame and of course they realized their mistake as we read through the, the chapters. So today, uh, text is text number five and six. Is it five? It's on the board? Both of them, okay. So we read together, and then we read the translation and the purport. Ityadishta Bhagavata Gatwa Ya Chanta Te Natata Kitanjali puta vipran Danda bat patita bhuvi He bumi deva Is it? Okay. Okay. He bumi deva shunta. Krishna Shade Sakarina Pratam Janita Badhamva 
Gopanot Pramachoditan. Second one. Krishna Shadeva Karina Patanjanita Padrambo Gopano Ramachodita Matajas. Hey Bumideva, O earthly gods, Srinuta, please hear us, Krishna Shya Desha, of the order of Krishna, Karinaha, the executors, Praptan, arrived, Janita, Please recognize, Padran, all good, Ba, unto you, Gopan, Kahat boys, Na, us, Ramachoditan, sent by Lord Ram. So translation, first uh, the, uh, text number five. Thus, instructed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Kohed boys went there and submitted their request. They stood before the Brahmanas with palms joined in supplication and then fell flat on the ground to offer respect. Text number six. The Kohed boys said, O oh, earthly gods, please hear us. We Kohed boys are executing the orders of Krishna, and we have been sent here by Balaram. We wish all good fortune for you. Please acknowledge our arrival. Purport. The term Bumideva. Gods on earth refers, to, refers here to the Brahmins, who are supposed to closely represent the will of the Supreme Lord. The philosophy of Krishna consciousness is not a primitive polytheistic doctrine holding 
that human beings on the earth are gods. Rather, it is a science that traces the descent of authority from the absolute truth himself, Sri Krishna. The authority and power of God naturally extend along with the extension of his creation. And on the earth, the Lord's will and authority are represented by purified, enlightened men called Brahmanas. This account will illustrate that the ritualistic Brahmanas approached by the coward boys were not at all properly enlightened and thus could not appreciate the position of Krishna and Balaram or that of their intimate associates. In fact, this pastime exposes the pretentious position of so-called Brahmanas who are not faithful devotees of the Supreme Lord. Gurave Gurachandaya, Radhikaya Tadala, Ye Krishna, Ye Krishna Bhatta, Ye Tabata, Ye Namonama, Agana Timindasha, Ganan Ganan Salakaya, Taxus Nutta, Ye Natas, Masi Gurave Namaha, Namamo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna, Pistaya Bhutta, Vishmati Bhatti Vidanta Swami's Namina, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Gorabani Pacharine, Navy say Sasunya Badi Pashadistarine, Vancha Kapa to Rubias Chakri Pass in the Bibu Chapati Tana, Pavano, the Bibashna Vivina Monaman. Say Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhuni Tiananda, Sriya Beta, Gadhara Sivash, and Gora Bakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I thank the, everyone for being here, and especially the senior Vaishnav. Haripa Maharaj. So by your blessing, I can be able to say something about this, this wonderful topic of the, the wives of the Jagni Brahmanas, the Brahmanas who are performing the sacrifice. Uh, this chapter, chapter 23, it basically, it explains the Lord Krishna begging, sending his uh, friends to go and beg food uh, from the Brahmanas who are performing the uh, Vedic sacrifices in the forest. And they, they refused to give. They refused. So the Kohat boys, they came back to, to where Krishna and Balaram were staying. And uh, of course, Krishna actually knew that because this Brahmana, because they are not devotees. So naturally, they are not devotees. So naturally, they are very proud of their Brahminical uh, position, Brahminical heritage. And because they are so much proud of that, they can't understand the Lord. They can't understand Krishna, God. Not to talk of his devotees, his intimate associate, his friends, the gopas, who he sent to the forest to go and beg food from, from them. And the, so the Lord knows this. And then, of course, but at the same time, the Lord knows that, yes, he is devotee, dear devotee, loving devotees, who are the wives of the Brahmanas, Jagapadni. They are the wives, the Brahmanas, and they are great devotees of the Lord. They are top devotees, great devotees of the Lord. And they have attraction for Krishna. So, so the Lord sends his friends that you go to their wives, and you see what will you go to their wives with the same message, which I given you before, that yes, Krishna and Balaram are there in the forest, and they are hungry, and you need to provide food. So, and then of course, this, was, this happened, the Brahmanas' wife, they were very, very 
full of jubilation that yes, Krishna and Balaram, they are in the forest and they want food and then they gathered all their food, all the food items and they are run to the place where Lord Krishna was, uh, was staying and then they provide all kinds of food items. And then of course, it, uh, then later on, these brahmanas, when they saw the, the, the eagerness of their wives, being able to provide everything for Lord Krishna, they felt themselves uh, very, very much ashamed. They felt themselves very, very much ashamed. They regretted their actions that because they were so much overcome well, with the pride of their Brahminical position, so they are unable to understand who is, who is God, who is the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Brahman. Because after all, what is the goal? What is the, the point of being a Brahman? Brahmana means the one who have understood Brahman, the supreme absolute truth. So what kind of Brahman are you if you don't understand God? So, so this, is a, this is the lesson that we're going to be learning from this, from this chapter. So here, um, uh, actually there's one uh, uh, in the song by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and in Nan Sankirtan, praising the, the, the devotion of the uh, Jagapatnis, the wife of the Brahmana, whereby he said, um, Jaya Duja Patni Jaya Naga Kanyagan Bhakti Te Jaharai Palo Govinda Charan so therefore, he said, all glories to the wife of the uh, uh, Jagni Brahmanas. All glories to them. The Jagni Brahmanas, Nagakanya, the wife of Kaliya. Uh, because they show that by devotion, one can attain the lotus feet of Govinda, Govinda Charan. Bhakti Te Jahara Pailo, Govinda Charan. Which means it's not by uh, some education, by being the great philosophers, or by being the great uh, yogis, or by being uh, whatever. Only by devotion can one attain Krishna, God. Krishna says, he also said that many, many times in Bhagavad Gita, that uh, only by devotion can I be understood, can I be attained. Only by bhakti can I be attained. So this, uh, the actions, of the uh, Dija partners, the, the wife of the Brahmanas, their action shows that yes, only by loving devotion that one can understand God. And of course, uh, it's, uh, it's so, uh, 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 it's so, um, the illustration of the fact that the women's folk, they are very, very, by nature, they seem to be more devoted to God, by nature. Like Shri Papa was uh, writing in one of his purports, they are usually, in every religious assembly, the women are usually, they are usually, usually women folk, then, you know, who are usually, you find more women than men. Usually men, the, everything is by, they tend to rely more on their logic, on their understanding, on their high philosophy. But women, is just by simplicity, they easily accept. They easily accept, you know. So, uh, therefore, the, and the Lord is, uh, is pleased when there is devotion. And that devotion is an activity which come, which, when we say devotion, we're talking of a genuine devotion, which is, which is an activity of the heart, the, 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 which is the, the heart calling. The genuine devotion is there. Because otherwise, uh, there can be some other kind of devotion by which one's, one is looking for a particular benefit. Just like sometimes a thief can be very, very devoted Let's say, like sometimes we have people that join our temple and they are very, very much, uh, uh, you know, they do everything nicely, but they're looking for the opportunity 
when they can make big steel, you know, like that. So it's not that, it's not that kind of a devotion whereby one wants to please the master so that the master, so that one can see what one can gain from the master. But the genuine devotion is flawless, is, is desireless. So this genuine devotion, this is what is uh, demonstrated by the inhabitants of Vrindavan, especially the gopis. And this devotion of the gopis is what attract Krishna himself. Krishna is all attractive, but he become attracted by bhakti. Krishna Kashane become very attracted by, by bhakti. And this genuine devotion is illustrated by the activities of the, the gopis of uh, uh, Vrindavan. So the Brahmanas, they are very, very, always very exalted. They were, uh, they always at the height, at the topmost level of human elevation. So that's why throughout the scriptures, the Brahmanas always glorify. They are the top of the human evolution, and that's why the, 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 the Gopa here, they are saying, uh, they are calling them Bhumi Deva, that oh, an earthly gods, the Lord of the heart, the Lord, the Lord of the earth. Hmm? So, for basically, if you want to approach a Brahman, Brahmana, then you have to, uh, you know, show them that glory that oh, the Brahmanas are so, exalt, uh, are so exalted. When Krishna was sending the um, his friends to these Brahmans, he said that you go to them, and yeah, because these Brahmanas, they are very highly learned. They're very, very early learners. They are called Brahma Bhadina, which means they know the you know, Brahmans, the Brahma Bhadinas, and they are very, they are very, very highly uh, elevated in the Vedic uh, scriptures. And uh, Krishna is telling them that now they are currently engaging in uh, performing sacrifice, angiras, because uh, they want to attain the, uh, for the elevation to the heavenly planet. Angiras is kind of a uh, Vedic sacrifice uh, by which one attained the heavenly planet, I guess. I don't know that, maybe Maharaj knows Angiras, Angiras Jaga. <laughs> so this is what the Brahmanas, this is what they were uh, performing. So Krishna says that you go to them, and beg them for food. And you have to be, Krishna is also telling his friend that yes, you have to be very, very humble. You should praise them nicely. And, and also, don't forget your position that as a beggar, you have to know what is to be done because you are begging something. Uh, don't just think that uh, just by asking for something, you will get it. Because after all, a, a beggar means always have to be very, very, you know, submissive. Just like here in Vrindavan, we have so many, many beggars here. They're always asking you this, this. So a beggar always has to be in a very, very submissive way. In order to, if you, if you, if you want to get something from someone. So Krishna is telling his friend that, yes, you go and beg. And be very, very submissive. You should praise them. So Krishna is, is, is telling them all the tricks, what to be done in terms of to get things from this these Brahmins. So they are about the, so Krishna's friend, so they went there, and then the first thing they told the Brahmin that, oh, oh, Lord of the earth, hmm? oh, Lord of the earth, so therefore, can they hear us? This is what, this is the reason why we're here. So they praise the, so they praise, they praise the Brahmin, they, they praise them. Now, when Krishna was in the forest, and uh, apparently became, uh, he became uh, hungry, he and his friend, because they've been, they been playing the forest for a long time, because in this particular day, they were so far away. They were so far away from the, from, from the, you know, from Vrindavan. So they, in, in, they were in the deep forest. So as they were in the deep forest, uh, so, which means Mother Yashoda the, and all the gopis, they could not send food to the, you know, to the Brahman, the, to the Gopi, to the Gopas, they could not send them food, so so therefore they become uh, hungry. 
Now, if you look at it, Krishna is called Atakam. Krishna is the supreme. Uh, he's self-satisfied. Now, does that mean that he become he's, he's, he's very, very hungry? So therefore, can he can actually God become hungry? Can he become hungry when everything is coming from him? Can he be hungry? Hmm? So, for those who are uh, atheistic, they will say that, oh, how can you describe God this way? If God can become hungry, so which means um, it's not supreme, you know. But he is called to he is he is called he is called the possessor of all opulences. Hmm? Just like when when he pondered us, when they were in the forest, and then the uh, the Odin, he wanted to give trouble to the Pandavas. So he sent uh, Duvas money to the forest to go and become their guest. And he specifically sent Duvas money to go there at the time when the Pandavas, when they had finished their meals, and also Draupadi, she has washed her pots. Draupadi has a pot called the Akshapatra. And this pot can feed unlimited numbers of people uh, as long as she has not eaten. This Akshapatra can feed, which this is a pot given by the sun god that, okay, you have this pot. This far will be able to feed any numbers of people. No, it, it doesn't matter how big number is. As long as you are not eating. But once you have eaten, then you can no longer, you know, the, the, the pot become empty. So this particular day, after the Pandavas have finished eating, and Draupadi herself had, uh, she herself, she had eaten herself, and she was a pot. And this was the time that uh, Duvasamani came. Duvasamani came along with his 60,000 disciples. He came. The Vasaman is a big guru. He doesn't travel alone. So he came we, along with his disciples as a guest of the Pandavas. And the Vasamani is such, such a sage that if you don't, he easily gets uh, angry because it's, uh, it's actually an expansion of Lord Shiva. He becomes very angry. And then when he's angry, he, with his anger, he can cause a big uh, chaos. He can cause that. So, when the money arrived at the cottage of the Pandavas, that time they were in the forest, and they, um, they called the Pandavas, they welcomed them, they were welcome, and all that. The marriage, marriage, and uh, so, and then Jesus marriage knew that uh, the situation has come now by which they have to work on the, the one's money and his, his, his disciples, they have to do something. So, so he told the one's money that, well, since you've all arrived and you've all been traveling for, for a long time, so therefore, before we can properly feed you properly, you can please go and take your bath in the river, take your noon bath, and then you come back, we will you know, we give you proper reception. So the first morning, along with his disciples, they went to the river to take their known bath. Because the Brahmanas normally they take bath three times a day. So now you just you just as Drupadi uh, wears her pots. If she had eaten, so Drupadi was in a big anxiety that we have, have eaten and the pot has been washed. So now the Pandavas, they are in a great calamity. They what to do. How are we going to, how are we going to feed uh, Dravas the money along with his associates? So the, the Pandavas, they only call upon Krishna. Hey, Krishna, problems, problems have come. Of course, the Pandavas, because they are great devotees of Krishna, no matter where Krishna is, the moment they call upon Krishna, Krishna always showed up. Because they are such a great devotee. Just imagine, you're in, you're in big trouble, and you call, hey Krishna, hey Krishna, and Krishna immediately appear before you. 
What's your problem? So that level of bhakti is, is, uh, is very, very rare. But the Pandavas, they are param bhaktas. Very dear devotee of Krishna. No matter how, whenever they call up on Krishna, Krishna shows up. So Krishna appeared. He said, uh, why are you calling me? What, do you, what is the problem? So you just explained explain that, look. You just, uh, 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 the verse just came here along with his disciples. The verse is here along with his disciples. Now they have gone to the river, and they're going to come back very soon, and they, we cannot feed them. And they, uh, if you're unable to feed them, this is going to create a very big problem. So the Christian said, don't worry. Let me see the pot of Draupadi. Draupadi said, there's nothing in the pot. I've washed the pot. Just, Krishna said, just let me see. So Draupadi, she gave the pot to Krishna. And then uh, Krishna looked inside. He took the leaf. There's a leaf that was stuck in there. So he took the leaf and ate it. He rubbed his stomach. He said, now if I'm, if I'm full, the whole universe is full. <laughs> After all, the whole universe is contained within his body. So if I'm full, the whole universe is full. So therefore, Draupadi, Krishna, had the leaf, and then it's full. Because Krishna is always self-satisfied. He does not need anyone to, to cater to his needs. He doesn't need it. But for devotion, for act of devotion, which his devotees have for him, Krishna becomes hungry. He becomes hungry, and he starts shouting to his devotee, why are, you, why are you late? Give my food. Why are you taking so long? Give my food. I'm hungry. I need to, I, I need to eat. Hmm? It's not that the devotee has to wait to make a big offering and uh, chanting so many mantras to, to, to offer. No, a devotee, he makes an act of devotion because Krishna is angry. He provides what Krishna wants. And then Krishna comes running for his... Uh, Krishna come running to accept the offering of his devotion. So therefore, Krishna is hungry because of the, 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 the devotion of his devotees. Not any other way. So Krishna is always self-satisfied. He's up to come. But the act of him becoming, uh, becoming hungry and uh, sending his, 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 his friends to go and beg for food, this is just to, to relish the devotion of his devotees. In this case, the, the Jagger Partners. This is just to relish it. So it's not that uh, uh, Krishna is really interested that uh, the, um, the Brahmanas, they should, uh, they should provide. So these Brahmanas, they were very, very much uh, 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 puffed up by their, you know, by, their, by their position. They were so puffed up. By their position, hmm? that when the Kahe boys, when they are, when the Kahe boys arrive, I'm begging them, they could not even, they would not even pay attention. They would not even pay attention, even though the Kahe boys said, "Look, we have been sent by Krishna. Krishna, Krishna ordered us to come here." And Balaram himself, he said, "We should come here." Balaram himself said, "We should come here." And I'm sure you must have heard of their glories. You must have heard of the glories of Krishna and Balaram. So if you have heard of their glories, why will you not give us what we are asking? They're just asking for some food. Hmm? But the, the Brahmanas, they were not paying, they don't even care, they don't even pay any attention to what the Bakahat boys are saying. They are just continue their, uh, their, their activities of doing the jaga, hmm? their performing fire sacrifices. And the, what is the goal? Who is the goal of jaga? Who is the goal of sacrifice? Hmm? It mentioned, Vasudeva Parana Jaga, Vasudeva Parangati, Vasudeva Parangyanam, Vasudeva Parantapo. That Vasudev Krishna is the goal of all knowledge. He is the goal of all sacrifices. He is the goal of yoga. He is the goal of all austerity. He is the goal of life. 
So, what is your study if you don't understand this? What is your study? What are you studying? You're calling yourself Brahman? I don't understand. You don't know that uh, the goal of your Brahminical study is, is that personality, Krishna. And that personality has not come asking for, uh, you know, for food. And I don't think that will because, because you may think that, okay, why are you asking me for food? If he's God, why, sh why should he be asking me for food if he's God? He should be saying, he should have everything. But it's, it's after all, why should he be asking, why should he be asking me for, for all these things? This is the, uh, this is the uh, atheistic mentality. They will think that uh, if, you, if your God is so great, why will you be needing something? If your God is uh, so great. Hmm? So therefore, Chaitanya Prabhu instructs us about simplicity of the, of the act of devotion. In the, um, Mahaprabhu said, when, when uh, Ramananda Roy, when he was uh, impressing him, so Mahaprabhu said, Naham vi puna chana rapati na pivashuna sudro, Naham vani na chagriya pati no vanasto yativa, Kintu proda nikila paramananda puna mitabde, Gopi patu padakamalo dasa dasa no dasa. This, this is coming from the mouth of Chitama Prabhu. He said, I am not a Brahman. I am not a Kshatriya. I am not a Vaishya or a Sudra. Nor am I a Brahmachari, a householder, a Vanaprastha, or a Sanyasi. I identify myself only as a servant, the servant of the servant, of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, the maintainer of the gopis. He is like an ocean of nectar and is the cause of universal transcendental bliss. He is always existing with brilliance. This is coming from the mouth of the Lord himself who had incarnated as a great devotee to show us how to be a devotee of Krishna. Even though the Lord appear in the topmost uh, Brahminical family, and all his associates, they all are like great, great Brahmanas, you know, the Advaita Chaya, they are great Brahmanas, great Brahmin. But the Lord said, no, I'm not a Brahman. I am not a Shatya. What am I? I'm simply, you know, Gopi Bhattu, Pada Kamalayu, Dasa Dasa, no das. I am simply the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant, of Gopi Bhattu, the husband of the Gopis. The husband of the Gopis, that is Lord Sri Krishna. Then the Lord is not saying, the direct he said, I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant, which means das, 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 das. So which means we don't call ourselves servant of Krishna, but we call ourselves the servant of the Lord, of those who are serving Krishna. Many, 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 many times over. Das, 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 and das. And that's why I mentioned that if you want to serve Krishna, we serve Krishna by serving those things that are called Krishna Tadeya, that belong to Krishna. Those things that, that Krishna, Krishna Tadeya, that what belong to Krishna, that's what we serve. We, don't, we cannot serve Krishna directly. For example, just like we, we don't know Krishna, but we know this, we, the spiritual master who is actually a manifestation of Krishna's mercy. He has kindly appeared before us, and by serving him, then we can get the grace of the love. It's not that uh, we can claim ourselves that, okay, let me, serve, let me serve Krishna directly. No, we can't. Just like... Uh, uh, Yesterday we were hearing some discussion yesterday about the um, about the uh, there's those who are trying to serve Krishna within the environment or what we call the kunja. Nikunja means in a close environment where Radha Krishna 
are, are performing their intimate, uh, where they are performing their pastimes. And, and it's not easy to just say, okay, let me go into this particular, let me go to this environment and render service to the divine, divine couple. No. One had to become like the, the maid servant, simply maid servant of the midst of those far removed. Even the, even the circus, even, even they don't even go into that, in the, into that particular environment. So, which means it's a whole, it's a whole thing, trying to be a servant of Krishna. Yeah. The servant of Krishna means we, first of all, the, the humility must be there. Because well, unless, unless, one, unless one is humble, one cannot really, you know, serve if, if, if there is no humility. So therefore, Srila Sanatya Goswami yeah, was saying that for those who have developed love of God, he said their main characteristics is humility. He said that the more advanced one becomes in spiritual life, the more humble uh, one becomes, the more advanced one is. So the the um, oh, I was trying to think of some points. Whereby the uh, uh, what's this? Okay. So one cannot. Uh, the, okay, there's uh, there's a point in the in the, in the next of uh, instruction back to Rasamrita Sindhu. There is a verse which says, "Bhukti Mukti Spriya Pisach Bhukti Mukti Spriya Yavat Pisachi Ridi Bhartate Tabad Bhakti Sukashiatra Katam uh, Abhyudayo Bhavet." It's talking about the in terms of the um, for one who is trying to serve the Lord, and then they maintain these desires of uh, trying to attain the heavenly planets. Just like these Brahmanas, they are engaging in this uh, angular ceremony because their desire is to attain the heavenly planet. But it's mentioned the material desire to enjoy the material world, such as going to the heavenly planet. And the desire to become liberated from material bondage are considered to be two witches, Pisachi, two witches. And they hunt one like ghosts. As long as these witches remain within the heart, how can one feel transcendental bliss? As long as these two witches remain in the heart, there is no possibility of enjoying the transcendental bliss of devotional service. So which means this self, this Brahman, they are engaging in their, in their sacrifices to, uh, to, to attain the heavenly planet. So there can be, any, there can be no particular uh, satisfaction. So that is not there. So when Krishna becomes uh, submissive, to the, uh, to the love of his devotees. Now, the, the devotees engage in a transcendental relationship with Krishna. There are five relationships. We start with the Santa, Dasya, uh, Saka, Matsaya, and Amadriya, five transcendental relationships. And sometimes it mentions that uh, there are four, sometimes it's mentioned as four. Even though, because the Shanta, which is kind of like a neutrality of relationship, but the Shanta relationship, because in Vrindavan there are also those entities who don't have direct service to Krishna. We're talking of like the, the plants, um, you know, the rivers, all those entities, the animals. So their relationship, they seem to be in the category of Santa, Santa Ras. But it is love relationship. 
just like when the gopis, in the song of the gopis, in the Gopi Gita, the, uh, the gopis, they were uh, glorifying the various uh, entities of Vrindavan, the deers, uh, the, uh, you know, the bamboo, the bamboo stick, the trays, and not talk of Govada. So they are glorifying various Vrindavan entities. So which means, the, and, and the Gopi they are saying, all these devotees, they are, these are their devotees, and they are very exalted. They actually glorify them. They all oh, these devotees, they are very much, much, very, very much more exalted than us because they're able to see Krishna. They're able to, uh, they're able to realize just being with, just being with Krishna. So, which means there are five relationships that is there. Uh, uh, but if you take into consideration all, all this point, so. All these relationships are there in the personality of Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Because Krishna has got a special form by which all other forms are not, are not, are not there. His special form is that form by which there can be a relationship. This is called Naravat. Naravat means just like a human, like a human relationship you can have. Whereas in his capacity of God, this relationship is not possible. It's not possible to have a relationship with Krishna in the capacity of God. For example, just like when Gopal Kumar, when he entered by country planet, and he saw Lord, 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 Lord Narayan, so Gopal Kumar, he had, this, he had developed a mentality of, uh, of Shakya relationship with Krishna, but entering by country planet, and he went to the, the palace of Lord Narayan, so he thought that he could, you know, exchange, have a relationship with Lord, Nar Lord Narayan, his, with his fluid and all that, but he was prevented. They were told, you were told that, uh, what are you doing? This is what, who do you think you are? So he was prevented you know, from doing so, because in Vaikuntha it's not possible, with Narayan it's not possible. But with Krishna is possible. With Krishna is possible. So therefore, the form of Krishna is the supreme form, form of Godhead by which one can have the transcendental loving relationship uh, with him. This in terms of the five categories which are which, which are described. So anyway, so there are many, many points which are which are there in this chapter by which we can relish, we can, you know. As, as, this, this, as this has been described, how the love of uh, Krishna's devotee is, is the supreme. And this love is what pleases Krishna himself. It's what Krishna himself become, uh, he become purchased. He actually loses all, it, all his independence because of the love of his devotees. And this is uh, shown by the great devotion of the DJ partners. The, the wife of the Brahmins. So I'm going to uh, stop here. <laughs> Thank you very much for tolerating my speech. If there's any comment or question, you can please. Mark, you can like to add something. So it's interesting that um, even 5,000 years ago, these Brahmins, because being in Vedic culture, were understanding religion to mean some sort of ceremonies and rituals and different performances. And the wives, although they're not learned, you know, Brahmana, they're instructed in the rituals. But by hearing about Krishna and chanting about Krishna, they, they seem to make much further advancement in the true understanding of self-realization. So Krishna, in one sense, dismissed the ritualistic, rabbinical type of they're just performing something for the sake of performance without clear understanding. And the gopis, their wives, they achieve very rapid realization simply by hearing about Krishna and chanting about Krishna. So it yeah. seems that hearing and chanting is the topmost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You like to have some knowledge? <laughs> Comments? Mm -hmm.
Definitely. Marek wants to say something? Very interesting topic. Why do so many people come back and forth to Vrindavan to India and are talking about Krishna. They have seen Krishna, such a beautiful, cute, handsome, attractive boy. Play fruits, very nicely, like So, by I mean, just like when, when Krishna was sending the, 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 go, the Gopal to, to the Brahmin, he told them that uh, just glorify my name, call on, mention my, glorify my name and Balarams to them, to, this, to these Brahmins. But because they are, no, they are not fortunate, they are unable to become, they are unable to, uh, to understand. But the same message was sent to the, the same message, the Krishna, same message, Glorify my name and Balaram to these to their wives. And the Brahman, the wife, they easily accept this. Oh, they become very ecstatic. You know, they become very just by hearing the glories of uh, the names, you know, the names of Krishna and Balaram. So therefore everything is uh Nam Sankitan. <laughs> That's everything. Jai, thank you very much.